You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm here talking with Ray Mayer from the band Revanchist and also from the band No Hope for the Lost. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, Ray, and welcome to The Pit. Thank you so much for having me. I always imagine everyone as a superhero, so I always like to start with people's origin stories. So take me back. How, how, what was influencing you when you were younger? How, how did you discover your passion for music? Because originally you were born in Penticton, oddly enough, weren't you? Okay, so honestly, this actually, like, this lines up an absolutely perfect origin story because, like, I, I'm so glad that I'm doing this, like, out of a a Penticton radio station too. Okay. So I was, uh, uh, as mentioned, I was born in Penticton. Um, and my mom, when I was two moved us out. And unfortunately I never really got, um, to know my real dad. Um, I met him a couple of times throughout life, but it was very, very brief. And then, um, however, um, he found out when I was nine that I wanted to start playing guitar and he actually bought me a guitar and an amp and he got like my grandparents to like get it to me. Wow. And um, so I started taking guitar lessons around when I was nine and I just stuck with it ever since, like learning other instruments like as I grew up because I ended up living in a really small town like uh, in Alberta. And what kind of influences would you have? What kind of bands were you, do you remember first becoming obsessed with? Um, at first, like when I was like, really little, I was shown like Metallica and Slayer and especially Pantera. Like um, that was a huge influence for me. I would definitely say Metallica and Pantera. Then like growing up, um, I would hang out with my uncle um, and he would show me like, and keep in mind, I must have been like between the ages of six and eight during this. And then during that time, he got me into bands like Slipknot and Machine Head and Fear what? Factory. So like I've been like a fan of like Fear Factory since like the obsolete days. But I was just like little. <laughs> That's so funny because, I, you know, Fear Factory was one of my first favorite bands. I remember being in grade three and listening to like Demanufacture and like obsolete and stuff. So it's so crazy to hear you talk about that. It's, you really had metal all the way back to like when you're six. That's crazy. Yeah, like it's always just kind of like happened to be around me. Like I feel like my parents always did a really good job of trying to be like, no, that's bad or whatever. And then like trying to get me more into like rock and stuff. But then like people just kept on showing me metal and I always just like gravitated more towards it. And that's that's awesome, though. So your first instrument was a guitar. Yeah. And uh, you, you got that when you were nine, you were saying. So then did you start kind of finding people around town to kind of play with as you became a teenager? Um, yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Like, um, I grew up in a really small religious community. Oh, in Canada? Oh, what are the, what are the odds? Yeah, <laughs> like small rural southern Alberta town. And um, I started um, playing with a friend that played drums. And then we found another friend that played guitar. And we got my brother from Medicine Hat to play bass. And this is like around like junior high days, like early high school. And we literally like all we could do is just like, jam like old acdc and like basic metallica songs because nobody really wanted to like hear or play the heavy stuff like around there even though like me and a couple other people were listening to it nobody was really willing to play it even to the point where like any jam spaces that we did play at would like come down and yell at us if they heard any like screams happening oh wow just totally against it eh? just no tolerance for the, yeah. the heavier heavier styles but wow. then like once I got my driver's license and started working in the town a few minutes away, though, um, I like pretty much just deep dived and immediately started playing in a death metal band. <laughs> you had to get your fix. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what was the name of that band? Um, we were called The Evulsion, and we stayed together for like a really long time, actually. We only ended up doing like one like smaller tour and then a bunch of weekend runs. But like um, we got to play local festivals a lot. And for the time that we were together, we had like a lot of fun doing it. It was just like down tuned, angry death grind. And like I'm kind of sad we didn't like really like last until like the, 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 the like peak of the streaming age. But I'm also kind of like working on a project that's like a spiritual successor to it. It's just I'm so busy now. Like um, that was like. I started having kids during that time when I was in that band. So like, it, it congratulations, got, like, by the way, oh, thank you. Um, so it definitely got harder to like balance things. And 
now as much as I'd like to continue the death metal thing, um, I've just got no hope for the loss of Nirvana right now. Doing really good with that. And like, uh, there's just time and place for everything, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so I, I need to kind of get into my idea of uh, the band formations. Maybe we can just focus on No Hope for the Lost because this this originally began as a uh, uh, Deadlights, I think you called. Yeah. Okay. So um, I wasn't in the band or um, when they first formed as Deadlights. Um, Nathaniel has always been a really good friend of mine, and he formed Deadlights around the time that um, things weren't working out with his other band, Nuclear Oath. And uh, he would always send me demos, and it was it was really awesome. And um, eventually, they started playing local shows once he got a lineup for it. But they really didn't get to play all that often. And um, after they managed to release an EP, they got a couple like gig and festival offers um, for 2020, which we all know what happened there. And um, Nathaniel asked me to join as a live guitarist, so I definitely obliged. And then once COVID hit, essentially. Um, the entire live band essentially just dissolved and like Nate wanted to record an EP. I wanted to record an EP and like, um, another member of the band that isn't like with us anymore. Like, um, also wanted to just hit the studio and record. And basically during, um, COVID we hid in our basement that I like, uh, I live in the house with Nate now. So like around the time that I moved in, we pretty much locked ourselves down in here and came out with the pilgrimage calling ourselves uh, no hope for the loss instead after. And so is that where a lot of the writing process happened was like inside, like in the room together, or did you guys kind of like to go off separately or is it like a mix of the two? It's definitely a mix of the two. Um, the, like a lot of the material on the pilgrimage was um, a, a, like a compilation of demos, Nathaniel and ex members of deadlights, um, have been working on and not, like hadn't quite been completed, but like they were definitely good ideas that like had to be kept. And then once I became like the sole guitar playing member, um, I wanted to like bring these songs back to life. So I added a couple of new like choruses. Like I wrote the chorus in new Yevin or in you Yevin. And um, <clears throat> basically I ended up just like adding a little bit of more flavorful parts to a couple of riffs that sounded repetitive, replacing a couple sections with a couple of different parts. And they ended up just coming out as entirely new songs. And so where did this uh, idea to make it kind of based around final fantasy come from? Is that something you always wanted to do? Um, so uh, the final fantasy was actually kind of like a last minute thing, but like, I guess this is straight up what happened here. We didn't really know what to write the EP about. And um, I was just kind of nerding out one day, hanging out at my local comic store, and I found like a stuffed, uh, like a stuffy of Yuna from Final Fantasy X-2. And I like grew up playing both Final Fantasy X and X-2 like a lot. And we we were like, we're having the idea of like, we want to write a concept album, we just don't know what about. And that day at the comic store, I just like pretty much picked up this like Yuna doll and brought it home and like... We were just hanging out in the studio and I just like pretty much raised it up and was like, yo, this is what we should like write about. And like everybody thought about it for a second and they were just so down for it. So is Final Fantasy, uh, like uh, you said, the Final Fantasy is a game that you really like. Is that something that you've all have in common? Oh, yeah. Like um, Nate is he, like he's an even bigger fan of the lore than like um, I am. So like he totally loved the idea of this. Um, he ended up doing all the lyrical writing and everything for it. He's a lot better at telling stories and lore than I am like. And so definitely like um, basically I, I had the idea for it and then he just like ran a mile with it and it just ended up coming out fantastic in my opinion actually like um we got an idea of like we want to continue doing like um video game themed dps and um i don't want to say too much right now but um we're moving on to we're thinking about doing pretty much majora's mask next oh cool yeah that that was a zelda one wasn't it yeah okay <laughs> i was always an elder scrolls guy so i'm trying to keep up <laughs> so uh what is your favorite song to play live right now Okay, so um, we only got to play live once so far, but as far as like rehearsals go and like what we're um, and getting to play live, there's this demo of a song that we're um, working on, and we started to play it live. Um, we're gonna work on it as a single and drop as a standalone, and it's called Bloodstone, 
and like it's just a really fun song i think it like showcases a more like melodic side of us but also is our like one of our more like technical and guitar driven songs at the same time like um we somehow managed to make something like even catchier than you yevin but even harder to play on guitar and that's that's always uh, a, bu- a beautiful thing that you can do and you can make something that you know is challenging yourself but at the same time is going to be fun and like a good high energy melodic kind of song that's going to grab people that's cool you're pushing yourself in a lot of different directions by doing that and like uh, that's just it like i love like a lot of rhythmic music like i'll be honest i love like a lot of stuff like amir just basic like breakdowny like chug 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 stuff but when it comes to like me playing guitar i just gotta keep my fingers busy <laughs> and so you recently played at loud as hell we did <laughs> So and I imagine that must have been a lot of work going up to that, but it was such a long time. I mean, after the pandemic and everything that we don't need to talk about. Oh yeah. How did it feel to go out there on stage and play in front of people again? Um, very, very nerve wracking. Um, we had like a lot of technical difficulties, but we pulled through and still had like a really fun time doing it. Um, like I had played a show with Revanchist prior to that, like at a venue, but still just stepping up on the festival stage was definitely like, holy crap, I was nervous. And um, I, I still thought we had a lot of fun, though. Like um, we had a couple things like um, my mic and my vocoder, like um, not working during a couple parts. But like I just like worked through it and just focused on the riffs, honestly. That's awesome. And how was the response? It, it was pretty good, actually. Like, um. Yeah, like people like didn't really see what was like wrong on our technical end of it and were apparently very entertained and like they thought it was cool to see us like come out and play and like i i was like it was definitely one of those moments where like i like walk off stage like oh my god that was absolutely horrible and then afterwards everyone was like yo that was sick and then i was like okay awesome i feel a lot better now <laughs> i think it too everybody was just so stoked to see performances again right exactly and like that's that's like the fun thing about it is just like um like i I think like sometimes you just gotta learn like you're gonna run into problems like every show you play like to one degree at another the main the main important thing is though is like don't get lost in those moments and like just have like fun with it and just roll with the punches honestly absolutely that's that's great advice uh i need to know though outside of music like what else what else is happening for you What, what other hobbies do you have how do you balance everything out Honestly, like, um, ever since the pandemic started, like I used to be a person that like worked a lot. And after like COVID started, um, I decided to just like get on like CRB, CERB and stuff. And just like, I started like living at home a lot more, spending a lot more time with my kids. And like a year and a half later, I'm actually like, I became a lot more of an introvert to be completely honest. Like I do a lot of my own like solo music writing whenever I can. Um, I guess like I'm a nerd for like, I'm not like the hugest anime nerd compared to like some people I know, but I definitely am like, um, I like collecting like Evangelion merch and like, um, I've been working on a berserk manga collection, I guess. And, um, I guess rather than that and like making beats and and stuff, um, I just hang out with my daughter a lot. That's awesome. And how old is she? Uh, she's three years old. Awesome. Awesome. Congrats again on that. And uh, I need to know now, just what do you see on the horizon for yourself? Like, I know that you're working hard on Revanchist. You're working hard on No Hope for the Lost. But what do you see coming up? What do you what do you what can we expect from from coming down the pipe from you? <laughs> well, right now, um, Nathaniel and I are working hard on just like um, making sure we're tight for these next two revanche shows. And then like we're probably just going to get back in the studio with no hope for the lost here. And as far as like long term plans go, I'm going to be completely honest. Like um, ever since everything in the last year and a half happened, I kind of just stopped um, doing long term things and just started living life like day by day and moment by moment because like life's short honestly and yes like expectation versus reality like as a constant it will do nothing but disappoint you as a person i find and like the more like you realize that you just gotta like live in the moment the less like things pass you by i guess is what i'm trying to say here absolutely 
And this is just kind of leading into my next question, which is a question that I always ask people. It's always, it's kind of corny, but I still like to ask it. It's simply, what advice would you give to anyone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Um, put yourself around an environment that cultivates growth. Um, if you know that you're around somewhere that is just like not allowing you to do the things that you want to or think the way that you need to you need to do what you can to like remove yourself from that situation and be somewhere like where you can be the person that you need to be and think the thoughts that you need to think and like we're basically somewhere where you can just be yourself essentially because sometimes you can accidentally find yourself in a lot of places that just like drain you as a person and be around people that drain you and like um becoming aware of that is a very hard thing but it's a very important thing i don't know if i'm making any sense here but like um i guess what i'm just trying to say here is like the environment that you're around and the people that you put yourself around is a lot more important than you think and it's something you just definitely cannot dodge yeah and i think it's a lot of something that people just kind of accept and take for granted and that they can't change any of that and it's like that analogy of the the, the crabs inside the bucket, right? And then the one the one crab tries to crawl out of the bucket, but the, all the other crabs grab them and bring them back down into the bucket. And uh, yeah, think for yourself, <laughs> I guess is kind of one of the points. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a huge point there. What, wise words from someone who knows everybody. <laughs> is there anything else that you'd like to say to our listeners? Um. To anybody that like hasn't heard No Hope for the Lost yet, um, I hope you check us out. For anybody that has and that has been supporting us, like, thank you very, very much. Um, that like everybody's support means the absolute world to us, and like, um, we just hope that we can keep on doing like awesome things for everybody. Honestly, like, um, I'm extremely grateful to just like be able to do interviews and be social and talk to people and stuff. It's all a very different experience for me compared to like, um, what I used to do. And it's just all super cool. And I feel really grateful and thank Thanks to everybody. And thank you for taking time to talk to me. I need to ask though, for anybody who wants to find you guys online, what was the easiest place for people to track down your music and everything, stay up to date with you guys? Um, we got all of our stuff on Spotify. If you don't do the Spotify thing, we do have a band camp. Um, if like, if you want to be um, involved with us on a social media aspect, we got a group on Facebook called no hope for the lost soup posting. And like, yeah, a lot of it is like memes, but that's like where we like keep our main news, like with our fan base and everything. And it's where you can like pretty much catch us chilling at. <laughs> Sweet. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been here talking with Ray Mayer from the band Revanchist and No Hope for the Lost. Ray, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Thank you so much, Derek. Have yourself an awesome day, and yes, I hope we do this again sometime soon. Awesome. Thanks. Take care. Take care. <laughs>